you know, if you love helping people, you love medicine, uh, you know, do join us. Mm. Uh, we welcome everyone. Hello Malaysia. Hello world. Apa khabar? Welcome to ACM Talk with topic for today, Medical Education During Pandemic. I'm Raja Shahrol, your host. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought about unprecedented and dramatic changes to the world. Like many industries, medical education has undergone major revolution amid the pandemic. The journey to become a medical doctor remains challenging as the world fights against the coronavirus. However, looking from a positive perspective, there is a new meaning to becoming a medical doctor in this testing time. Let us hear more from my guest today, Professor Dr. Rebecca Wong, who will share more about our topic for today. Welcome back to ACM Talk, Professor Dr. Rebecca Wong. How are you? Fine. Good. Now, coming back to the topic of today's discussion, what impact or change has the pandemic brought upon medical education, especially in the teaching and uh, teaching of R and D? Yeah. Yeah. So, I hope I've got um, that question right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Um I think when we first uh, encountered the pandemic in 2020 and then followed by 2021, the yeah. first two years were um, a lot of changes uh, has taken place. Uh, I've been teaching medical and health sciences students for the past 18 years mm -hmm. and uh, never had I thought of medical education online. Okay. And I've never thought that uh, we could actually teach our courses uh, online. online we never used uh, things like microsoft teams and zoom right. in the past and the past two years uh, really amazed me because we learned so fast right. like within a very short time right. we learned all sorts of technologies and we learn different ways mm -hmm. to cope with the pandemic because mm -hmm. uh, I think most people know that for the past two years we had uh, several phases of MCO, Movement Control yes. Order yes. and the students were not allowed to come to the campus so we had to think of very creative ways to teach them online mm. so we learned a lot of new things mm. in the past two years uh, like Microsoft Teams, uh, Zoom and Google Meet and things like that right. and we managed to put the uh, theory classes online right. and with some of the practical classes mm. um, uh, we converted into videos and some interactive sessions with our students right. um, so we managed to overcome mm -hmm. the restrictions that we face uh, especially for the past two years and I'm happy to say that now we are gradually um, um, going back to near normal life right. it's not 100% normal we still mm. have to keep our social distancing yes. and uh, wear masks yes. and uh, however because of vaccination and things like that uh, our students uh, returned to the campus uh, last year in October mm -hmm. and there was such a big relief but having said that I think we have done uh, you know we have put in a lot of efforts to overcome right. and learn new things right. and also to come up with lots of creative ways yeah. uh, to make things possible in the past two years right all right prof now on that note has any of your students discussed or give you feedback about the challenges that they face? 
Um, yes, uh, I have come across uh, some students who actually uh, raised their concerns mm. and uh, one of the biggest concerns was during that time, especially when they couldn't come to the campus, was the interaction between the students and the medical teachers. So I think teaching online still has its restrictions. It's not like, uh, it is not exactly the same as when you see your students face to face. For example, a lot of the body language uh, and uh, facial expressions, they can't see it clearly when you're doing it online, even though we have the video, uh, the recording on and so on. Yeah. So they did mention that they uh, they miss the interactions, mm. not just with the lecturers and you know, the staff in our campus, but also with the their uh, friends, their mm. colleagues, because mm. uh, before the pandemic, they could discuss assignments and things like that mm. with their friends. Mm. Now they, because they during that time they were not allowed to come to the campus, so that interaction was not there and they really missed that and of course mentally they you know, felt a little bit bored <laughs> staying at home mm. for months. I mm. think uh, for 2020 and 2021 we spent almost half the time staying at home. Yeah. So they were affected in a way because they, they missed uh, talking and you know having fun with their friends and uh, discussing home uh, assignments and things like that. Mm. And also they miss their extracurricular activities during that time because last year we had some but very minimal compared to before the pandemic because mm. uh, there were lots of restrictions so mm. they couldn't do as much as before right. like fundraising right. and all these um, extracurricular activities right. mm. uh, they used to have uh, sports Correct. you know they used to play sports yeah. together yeah. and because of that i think they were well um, uh, they missed those things right. but mm. it is slowly uh, coming back mm -hmm. we are very still very careful because the pandemic is not over Precisely. And still yeah. cases so we are very very careful when it comes to things like that mm. we still practice very strict uh, social distancing and strict compliance to SOPs and things like that mm. so uh, those are the some of the things that they mentioned mm. but uh, we also have uh, international students who who were not able to come at that time because of uh, uh, closure of the borders and uh, you know visa issues because it took a long time for things to process during mm -hmm. that time mm -hmm. but I think things are slowly improving now and um, a lot of our international students have already come uh, to Malaysia All right. to All right. join us uh, uh, our face-to-face -face, uh, classes okay. so that's a good sign I mean mm -hmm. we are slowly uh, moving back to near normal life as I mentioned mm, mm, mm. so those are some of the uh, good signs <laughs> that's, that's yeah. good to know yes now COVID-19 preventive measures have been impl implemented in laboratories now has this significantly increased the cost of lab operations and add any restrictions for lecturers mm, when Maybe? it comes to lab laboratory uh, works or classes right uh, we do have uh, restrictions mm. as i mentioned uh, nowadays we need double probably double the space to for the same number of students because right. uh, last time they can sit close yeah. together side by side you know yeah. but now we instead of one lab we may need two labs because of social distancing mm. and we need more people as well because you put the students in two different uh, venues so mm. instead mm. of one lecturer you may need two yeah. uh, lecturers to, right. to run the class so right. these are some of things and the venue uh, is you know we have to plan very carefully because mm. as at any time you are probably using double the space mm. and um, also our lab uh, support staff they've been very 
uh, careful as well in terms of uh, sanitizing the equipment, or disinfection. I mean, disinfecting the uh, equipment, equipment or things that the students use for teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. So, uh, inevitably, it will in I mean, incur some cost. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, this is uh, nothing compared to the safety of the, the lives and safety of the students. Of course. So we yeah. should take. Uh, extra uh, precautions to mm. make sure that students are safe, they right. can learn in a safe environment. Mm. And I think those are the things that are different when we talk about the pre pandemic and uh, uh, what we are facing now. Right. When you said about doubling the laboratories and the lab assistants, generally, how many students are you looking at? Per, per in per in one lab, uh, a prof compared to the usual. Uh, we the same number of students are there, okay. but uh, they have to be placed in a Into separate different, right. uh, uh, labs. Okay. Because they can't be sitting so close mm. anymore, mm -hmm. and um, the the student number is the same. Okay. But the venue, the the uh, you need two labs to separate in, them. Yeah, to yeah. separate them. Yeah. So yeah. this is. Uh, one thing that we encounter, but it, it, it is manageable because uh, we just uh, make sure you know they are safe. Right, right. Uh, That's the top criteria. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. Now, okay, Prof, what tips or suggestions that you have for medical students and school leavers interested in joining them at the medical program? Well, um, the. One message I would like to send to them is that um, the pandemic has taught us a lot of things. Uh, mm -hmm. One of it is that we need doctors, right. and not just doctors, but we healthcare professionals. Uh, that's why if you are interested in becoming a doctor, you are passionate about helping people, then I think this is the right uh, program for you because uh, I think I don't have to convince uh, everyone that the world needs doctor, especially in this <laughs> pandemic. There right. are many areas that we need doctors. Uh, of course, one of it is to um, see patients in the ward, make right. diagnosis and uh, treat them. Mm. Uh, not just because of COVID-19, there are lots and lots of diseases that need the uh, care of a yeah. doctor. Yeah. But there are also other areas that uh, we shouldn't overlook because mm. um, we need doctors to do uh, clinical research, especially at a time like this yeah. where we are still uh, looking for a cure. Yeah. And there's currently no cure for right. the disease. Right. And drug discoveries uh, as well as vaccine development mm -hmm. these are key areas of uh, research mm. if you love medicine and you love r and i think this is a uh, uh, this program is for you mm. and mm. you have a lot of career options. Okay, practicing as a doctor is one of them, but you can also do many other things with an MBBS degree. Mm. So I think, uh, you know, if you love helping people, you love medicine, uh, you know, do join us. Mm. Uh, we welcome everyone. And uh, It's a five-year program, mm. so you really, really have to love what you're doing. Yes. If you're doing it because your parents ask you to do this, or you you, you think uh, you know um, you have scored four A's or five A's in your exams, and you want to do this, I think you have to uh, think very carefully. Yeah. But if you truly love medicine, mm -hmm. then you, you you should do it. Right. Because right. there's a demand there, and um, 
it's interesting. It's okay. a very, you know, the life of doctor is actually very fulfilling. Yeah. So you get to see different people. You get to help them, and when they recover or they, you know, they, they discharge from the board, you feel a sense of, uh, you know, satisfaction. You have helped somebody. Right. So it's tough, but at the same time, it's fulfilling and it's very interesting. Okay. So, mm. yeah, you mm. have to work very hard as well as to persevere. persevere. Because there will be times when things are tough mm. and you just need to persevere and work And hard. carry on. Yeah. yeah, and carry on. Yes. And not to give up easily. Yes. Now, Prof, looking at, I mean, despite what has happened in the last two years with the pandemic, yeah, with the lockdown, and that should not deter the, the potential medical students from going into this into this field. That's what basically you're trying to say. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. also, I think um, in Saigi, we yeah. are very lucky in a sense that mm. um, our teaching hospital is in Cebu. All right. And I think at the peak of the pandemic last year, where we had like 20,000 cases, right? Uh, lots of hospitals were flooded with patients. And in Cebu, because um, Cebu Teaching Hospital is almost exclusive for Saigi students, so we managed to uh, have some of the clinical teaching on and off uh, when the students were allowed to go to the wards. So uh, they, they you know, quickly went in and learned uh, during that time. So mm. we did have some uh, p uh, periods where we could use the ward mm. for our clinical teaching. So we were not so um, affected in a way. Mm. So I think it shouldn't, uh, a lot of things can be done online, but there are also some things that you cannot replace. Yeah. 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 Especially when we're talking about uh, training of uh, the future doctors, right? They need to see patients. Yeah. I think that is something that cannot be compromised. Yeah, yeah. cannot mm. be compromised, and mm. it cannot be replaced by pure online teaching. Mm. Uh, no doubt, we have things like simulated patients, you know, virtual consultation, and things like that. You can do, you know, like history taking online. Mm. But I think uh, uh, seeing the patients is still a very important part of the training right so right. Uh, you know we, we we could do that on and off in 2020 and 2021 when uh, things were a bit more settled our students actually could go back to the ward right. and now of course they are allowed to uh, see patients in the ward because i think the hospital is not so much mm. affected uh, mm. because i think the number of cases has gone down. Yeah, uh, yeah mm. has gone down, and yeah. it's not as high as uh, right. uh, cases in uh, uh, West Malaysia. All right. Okay. Thank you for your interesting sharing, Professor Dr. Rebecca Wong, and thank you again for being here with us on ECM Talk. Whether you are a, at a crossroad of making a career choice of having always wanted to be a medical doctor, medicine may just be the right field for you. Moving forward, 2022 shall be a time to relook into becoming one. Why? Well, we have heard from Professor Dr. Rebecca Wong, which undoubtedly have got you fascinated of becoming a medical doctor. Thank you again, Prof, for being here at our ACM Talk program. ACMians, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Edu Channel Malaysia. Sehingga kita berjumpa lagi di masa yang akan datang. Take care and stay healthy always everyone. Bye.